Turning our attention now to U.S. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta, who has warned he's concerned that Israel could attack Iran as soon as this spring. It comes at a time when Iran has turned nuclear inspectors away from some of its sites this week. And Siobhan Gorman joins us now from Washington uh, with the details. Siobhan, good morning. Good morning. Uh, what's the mood in D.C.? Can you tell us, is there a broader narrative? Is there sort of this warmongering that we start to hear people talking about going on when it comes to Iran? Well, there is some concern about warmongering, and I think that you're seeing a lot of uh, sort of dialing up and dialing back based on uh, whatever the, the most recent events are. You're seeing that on the part of uh, both U.S. officials as well as Iran, um, and, and to some degree Israel, although they're, they're obviously a little more full throttle. How surprising were the comments uh, made by Defense Secretary Panetta? The Washington Post first reported them. Apparently it was in a letter he sent from Brussels. How significant is that? Uh, I mean, it's significant. I'm not sure how surprising it is because we've certainly heard indications uh, over the last several months about concerns that U.S. officials have that Israel may be a little bit more gung-ho uh, and, and that they are concerned that, that they Israel could be uh, worried enough and fearful enough at this point that they might strike first. Siobhan, how much of this is theater for the populations both internally here in the U.S. and Iran? And how much of this is, is real conflict about which we need to be truly concerned? Uh, well, I, that's that's obviously very hard to, to gauge, but uh, both in the U.S. and in Iran, uh, we are in election years, and so certainly on on in, in both countries, you're going to have a lot of rhetoric in the U.S., uh, both from Democrats and Republicans, uh, and in Iran from, from their politicians as well, uh, that are going to seek to uh, frame the issue and, and the threat that Iran poses to their constituencies. We want to mention, too, that whenever these tensions start to flare, you can take a look at, for example, the spread between Brent oil and oil here in the U.S. They start to price in some of this concern. You see oil prices staying high, partly for this reason. The U.S. Uh, has just passed more economic sanctions on Iran. And Siobhan, are we expecting those to, to make a difference here? Already measures have been so tough, their economy is really on the ropes. Yeah, actually, there, there, there was a hearing yesterday where the director of national intelligence was asked about the impact of sanctions. And this, this also came up actually at another hearing earlier in the week as well. And basically what intelligence analysts say at this point is that the sanctions have not at all impacted the nuclear program in Iran at this point. Uh, but they are hopeful that as the, the most recent sanctions continue to bite, uh, a little bit harder that there may be uh, some some uh, pain felt in Iran that's sufficient to uh, start to turn the tide of public opinion and put pressure on leaders to ratchet back the nuclear program. And, and lastly, uh, we, we just want to mention again in, in a journal today reporting that Iran in some ways is seen as being more favor behaving, behaving more favorably towards Al Qaeda. Uh, yes. Can you explain briefly why people are getting this impression and how much to read into it? Well, Iran uh, in recent weeks has provided greater freedom to uh, five very senior al-Qaeda officials who have been uh, in Iran for several years under house arrest. And uh, the belief among U.S. officials is that these uh, these al-Qaeda operatives have been told that they can return to their home countries. And so U.S. officials are now debating what that means and what the significance is. Uh, there have also been indications that al uh, Iran has provided a very, very limited but still worrisome uh, material support to some al-Qaeda operatives. Uh, logistical support, money, and in some cases, cars. And so intelligence officials are now debating the, what, what that means and whether it shows uh, an enhanced partnership between Iran and al-Qaeda or whether it just is Iran uh, trying to stir up a little bit of trouble for the United States by saying, okay, right. U.S., you know, we're not going to watch these al-Qaeda guys anymore. This is your problem. Which certainly is done. Joan Gorman in D.C., uh, more details on that story and others in, w in the Wall Street Journal or WSJ. Dot com. Siobhan, thanks.